Check one, check one, check one, check one. Hello everyone, my name is Ian. You're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So here's what you can expect in episode two about the Husqvarna Norden 901. I know if I do one more video about features or specs or anything but riding the bike, there's gonna be a riot on my hands. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take the bike for a ride on the highway. We're gonna take the bike for a ride off-road on some of the usual stuff that I always ride all my test bikes on. Then we're gonna come back here to the driveway. I'm gonna give you my initial pros, my initial cons. So in other words, the things that stand out that I like, and the things that stand out that I don't like. I'm gonna show you some quick comparisons to other bikes that this competes most directly with, things like the Africa Twin, the Tiger 900, the F850 GS, bikes like that. So we'll look at that real quick and then we'll have kind of some conclusion thoughts about my initial impression. So keep in mind, this bike is really new. I only have 100 miles on it so far. I just rode it for the first time yesterday. I'm getting used to it. The bike is totally stock. I'm gonna start modifying it, uh, but I wanted to get a few videos done and filmed with the bike in the total factory condition so you can see all the equipment. Now I do have a whole series of videos coming out. So episode three is gonna be showing uh, all the features and specs and components of the bike in a lot of detail. So that's a really interesting video to watch. I've actually already filmed that video. There's gonna be an episode showing all the electronics in the dashboard and how all that works in detail. So that's really interesting. I'm also doing one where I take the bike apart, like I take the side panels off, I show you the battery, I show you the air filter, I show you where, how, like the oil change works. Uh, we're gonna take the fairing off, the windshield, show you that kind of stuff. Like, cause if you're gonna buy one of these, you wanna know all these things. I'm also showing you about the seat height and how all that works. The seat is in the low position, by the way, here. So anyway, enough talking, let's get to the riding. Um, Quick rock walk around the bike. Like I mentioned, the bike is totally factory. Factory tires, factory mirrors. You know, the only thing I have, I just have my tail bag on here with my supplies. But everything is stock. The bike has 100 miles on it. The seat is in the low position, so it's in a 33 and a half inch seat height, which you can tell because the yellow lines uh, line up here. When the seat's in the high position, uh, you don't have this gap here, but the yellow's out of place. So it's kind of a weird, annoying thing. You can see the rubber's still in the foot pegs, which I'm going to take off after I film this video. So getting on board the Norden here, uh, one of the first things, there's a couple things you notice right away, okay, before you even ride the bike. One is that how wide the seat is. The seat is very wide and it makes the bike feel taller than it actually is. So the seat height is 33 and a half, but it feels taller than that because the seat's pretty wide. So even me at five foot 11 with a 32 inch inseam, it's, it's pretty tall. However, the good news is to counteract that is the motorcycle, because the fuel tank is down here and the engine's also mounted very low in the chassis, the motorcycle is extremely, it feels so incredibly light. Uh, this, this is one of the, I don't want to say game changing, but this is like a killer feature or killer app of this platform the 790 and 890 platform and this bike is that the weight is so low like it does not feel like a heavy motorcycle moving it around getting on and off riding it really simply if you want the the, the lightest weight like most agile adventure bike i mean you're going to have to get this or get the ktm 890 because of the design of it, there's just nothing else that competes. Uh, looking at the controls here, uh, pretty basic control layout. I go into detail on those videos that are coming up, adjustable levers. The mirrors, I hate the mirrors. They look cheap, they vibrate. I don't like them. Uh, the dashboard, so let's go ahead and put our gloves on and get going. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk too much, but I always end up talking too much. So a few things you notice right away this switch here is for the extra lights that come factory on the bike uh, that actually work and light up at night pretty well okay here's the stock bow beam now i'm going to turn on the driving lights there's the driving lights we turn them off again 
You see how it spreads out light to the sides? Okay, now I'll show you the high beam. There's the high beam there. High beam, low beam, high beam, turn off the driving lights. You see how those driving lights add a lot of fill light? Got a 12 volt outlet here. The hand guards are actually pretty sturdy. Uh, the handlebars are adjustable. As with all KTMs, you've got your compression and rebound adjustments for the for the fork right here. That's really nice. Gas cap looks really nice and finished off. So, so the dash is. I don't know what the measurement is uh, on the dash. I'll put that here. It's not too big, but it's very crisp and very legible. It uh, has a lot of contrast. You, even in the sun, it's very good. Uh, the brightness adjusts depending on you know the lighting conditions really like the dashboard so far. Uh, you've got a fairing on this bike. So this is like hollow underneath here. This is not the gas up here. The gas is down here. Um, so we'll take that apart in the video, but this, some people are asking about this, this is a headlight adjustment. So it adjusts your headlight up and down. You can also adjust the auxiliary lights up and down. So we'll let the bike warm up here a little bit. Uh, one of the comments that people have made is that the motor sounds like crap. And frankly, it does. Uh, at idle, this motorcycle sounds like it's metal on metal. It just is not a reassuring sound. It's worse when it's cold. And I think as the engine breaks in, it'll, it'll get better. But right now you can hear that kind of clattering. That's, that's normal for this engine. The good news is when you're riding the bike, you don't that's not the sound you hear. It, it sounds much different when you're riding. So there's probably going to be a lot of wind noise in this video and I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I have pretty good recording equipment, but this windshield is noisy and that's one of the things we're going to show you in this, in this uh, review. It dumps all the wind kind of in the middle of my helmet. So let's talk about the riding position. People have asked about that. Uh, the riding position, if you've ridden other adventure bikes, uh, it's extremely comfortable. It's extremely upright. There's tons of leg room. The, your hands and arms have tons of room. Uh, your back's very comfortable. The seat on this bike is extremely wide and incredibly supportive. Maybe one of the most on any motorcycle I've ever ridden. Uh, they did a really good job with that. I think it's gonna be good for long distance riding. If you look down, you'll see the fairing does give your legs some wind protection, but it's not, I mean, it's not like a full on touring bike with a big fairing, but it does give you more wind protection uh, than uh, a lot of motorcycles do, or it's cousin the KTMs without the, without the fairing here. These hand guards provide nice protection from the wind and they're actually pretty sturdy. I, I do appreciate that, although I'm putting on bark busters just because I want to have additional protection. So I'm going about 40 miles per hour and it's already getting pretty windy on my helmet. It doesn't have the buffeting, like the helmet vibration that the uh, 790s and 890 Adventures really were known for. I even have videos about that if you go back in my, in my archive. Uh, this doesn't have the buffeting, but it still has quite a bit of noise. Yesterday I rode on the freeway at 75, 80 miles per hour or around 110 kilometers per hour plus. And it's very windy and, and not, not super good for, for that high speed riding. Uh, I'm definitely going to be the first to put some sort of different windshield setup on here. So let's talk about the handling and the power and the engine, everything like that. So just like I said, now that you're riding it, you don't hear that like clattery kind of noise that you did at idle. It sounds very nice uh, as you're actually riding. It's, it's fun to ride. So as we start to go through some of our first corners here, this motorcycle's fun. There's there's no there's no beating around that around the bush on that. It's very fun to ride compared to most adventure bikes because of the low weight. It's the lightest bike in its class. It's 472 pounds, soaking wet. It's a very light. It's very powerful, 105 horsepower, 74 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it, this thing is 
the power to weight ratio is incredible on this bike. The engine, uh, okay, so right now, so it's got quick shift, first of all. So you can see there's shifting without the clutch. The quick shift is very nice. It works very smoothly. You can see there, you don't have to use the clutch for your gear changes. It's great that that comes standard on the bike. I really do appreciate that. The transmission shifts very, very smoothly. The clutch has a nice, easy action. Uh, the brakes, let's talk about the brakes. Brakes are extremely good. So like I was saying, the brakes are incredible on this bike. They're so powerful and there's not a ton of dive from the front fork. In terms of how the suspension feels, very very compliant i don't feel you see all these little cracks in the in the asphalt we call these like uh uh, uh what do you call them uh, frost heaves or where the pavement is cracked uh from the ice and stuff on most bikes i feel like i can feel the jiggling as i ride over these this bike is very plush so on the highway what they've done what they wanted to do versus it's the ktm adventure r was to make something that's better for travel better for long distance that's what who's barna was going for and i think they they did achieve that especially with the suspension it's very compliant very plush it gives a very nice refined ride on the highway now we're going to find out in a minute how that translates off road because sometimes that could be too soft in the dirt um, anything above anything above 3500 rpm if you open the throttle the bike just surges forward like like i said the power to weight ratio on this is impressive and it makes it very fun to ride I mean, you can move, the way this bike transitions is really honestly pretty incredible. I mean, try doing this on your Tenere 700. This bike, because the low center gravity, it's it's so responsive. It just, you look where you want to go and it goes there. Some people have asked like, what RPM is the engine turning? So at 70 miles per hour or around 110 kilometers an hour, the engine turns 4,500 RPM. So there I answered one question already. So we'll pass these cars here and give you a taste of the power. I really don't see how you could want or need more power out of an adventure touring motorcycle. I just don't. Like, I have an R1250 GS in the garage, and I mean, yeah, that bike has a lot of power and torque, but honestly, this bike feels just as fast because it's 120 pounds lighter than that bike. This bike is fun. Super, super fun. And it feels so light. All right, what do you guys think? Should we get this thing dirty? I think it's time, right? Uh, when I ride off-road on this bike, um, well, I just know this because I used to have the 790. I've already programmed my quick selector, which I'm going to be featuring that in a video, so stay tuned for how to work all this stuff. But I have my up arrow programmed to the ride mode already, so all I have to do is go in here to off-road mode. You can see it has these cool graphics here on the screen. So we set that. And then uh, also I have my down button here to the ABS mode setting. So I can go to off-road ABS. Uh, so now I've got ABS off-road, ride mode off-road. And I can see that here on the main screen. So I've got ABS off-road mode. Traction control uh, is still on. But I can turn that off as well. But I'm in the off-road mode so the traction control is a lot less intrusive. So the uh, I can already tell I'm gonna like this bike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got it right. Okay, they got it right. Yes, I'm so relieved, dude. You can haul ass on this thing. Whoa, 
I, guys, I'm just kind of at a loss for words here. Holy crap. Let me try to put into words what I'm experiencing here. So I have a lot of experience on the 790R because I owned one. And I've owned or tested just about every other mid-size adventure bike. Here's what I'll say just as a summary if you don't have time to watch the rest of the video. This bike, because it's based on the 890 platform, is the best adventure bike, like multi-cylinder adventure bike, for off-roading ever made. It is so incredibly balanced, it feels so incredibly light, it handles, it turns on a dime, it stops on a dime. Uh, the chassis is perfect for uh, hardcore off-road adventure riding. What I was worried about with uh, Norden was that they were going to make it like too soft, right? Because, oh, they want to do travel, they want to do long distance. But I can tell you right now, for how most of you are going to ride, this bike is going to be absolutely incredible for this because a couple things. Uh, first of all, the electronics are amazing. The off-road ride setting, like this traction control, I don't even want to change it. Like I know I'm going to have the explore mode with the nine levels, just like the KTM rally mode, but this is so good. If this is all I had, I'd be super happy. Um, so that works really well. Uh, I mean, getting pushing this bike around through corners, like, I, I just can't even describe how well this thing handles. Like, I can't ride other adventure bikes this quick uh, with this much ease. It's just not going to happen. Um, oh my god, this is fun. And the suspension. Let me tell you guys something right now about the suspension. I know this is very early for me to say, and it's kind of unfair, but I think, I think they got the suspension perfect. Because here's the thing, some bikes, they make it so stiff and so hard that on the highway you're like jiggling around, and off-road it takes a lot of skill to ride. This is the perfect balance. It's like, it's compliant, it's plush, but it keeps the bike up in a stroke. It doesn't bottom out. I mean, you'd have to really push it pretty hard to bottom out. So, so far I would give very high marks to the suspension. And I'm very impressed because coming off the higher end suspension of the R model KTM, I was worried, but this is actually uh, probably easier to ride than that. And it's very plush, very comfortable. So first gear, I don't know why there's a fence post sticking up there. First gear is nice and low. I know some people will lower the gearing, but I can crawl along in first gear. There's no throttle right now, so the bike doesn't stall, doesn't want to stall easily like the 790s did. So there's you, there you go, first gear cruise control. Seven miles an hour is about 1500 RPM. This trail has a lot of embedded rocks. It has a lot of ruts and uh, different things. Maybe... You guys, I'm telling you, this bike, this bike is killer. Like, look how I can just rotate the rear end so easily. The suspension, oh, the suspension feels like magic. I know that there's better out there, but Oh man, it's so easy to ride fast and it feels so much lighter than every other adventure bike. I mean, look how fast I can just change directions and the brakes work incredible because I've been waiting to go back to this platform, the 798-90 platform, because it's so incredibly good. It's... <laughs> It's so far ahead of every other adventure bike that it's not even it's not even fair to the competition. I don't even think these factory Pirelli tires are all that bad. Some people were saying they sucked off road, but I don't know. They feel pretty good to me. Okay. Oh yeah.
So the like slow speed balance, like it, man, it's it's just very well balanced. Tight left turn. Try to do this without putting a foot down. Good clutch control. The clutch pull is a little bit firm. I might get that, you know, one finger clutch that Camel ADV sells. Whew, this thing is a hoot. Okay, so we're here at the whiteboard. I just wanna take a quick look at why the Norden is actually a really good value, and this is kind of a surprising thing. So let me kind of flip this camera here, show you this board, and uh, kind of show you how it compares to its closest competitors. Okay, so I apologize for my really crappy handwriting. I just wanted to throw this up real quick, and we'll do more detailed comparisons in later videos, but I wanted to show you just real quick. So the 90, a lot of people are gonna be cross shopping with the Africa Twin, the F850 GS, and I'm doing here with a select package, not the premium package, and the Tiger Rally, not the Rally Pro, because that has some extra stuff. So let's look at how this thing stacks up. So for pricing, the Husky is the lowest of any of these, okay? Technically, you could get an F850 for less, than 14,000, but it, it'll be a very base model and you never ever find those. So in reality, you're looking at at least having the select package, uh, which brings it up to 14.5, all right? And yeah, the Tiger Rally Pro has a higher package than this, um, but to be more comparative with the Husky, the standard rally, which is the one I actually did my review on. So anyway, the Husky has the best price, but let's look at power and equipment and weight. So horsepower and torque, the Husky also has the most powerful engine by quite a bit, even though these other engines are bigger. I mean, this Africa Twin is an 1100, but it only makes 100 horsepower. It does make a tiny bit more torque at 77 foot-pounds. Honestly, I thought it would be more torquey than that. If you look at the F850, it's way behind here at 90 horsepower and 63 foot-pounds of torque, and the Tiger is pretty decent as 94 and 64, but still, compared to the Husky, I mean, that's... They use a very high compression engine, very high performance engine, and that's, you know, you get more power. The weight. The weight is a big deal. So the Husky is also the lightest. So uh, the, the bike has been weighed by an independent uh, journalist on a scale at 472 pounds wet. That's fully fueled up, and that's been confirmed by somebody I trust. So actually, you can find that video on Facebook. Um, so that's only about three or four pounds heavier than the 890R. Okay, so that makes it the lightest in class because everything else here is around 500 pounds. So that's really good. Uh, what about equipment? So cruise control and quick shifter is standard on the Husky, all right? On the Africa Twin, cruise is standard, but you have to pay another $500 at least to get the quick shifter. On the F850, cruise is standard, but the quick shifter, you have to go all the way up to the premium package, which will make this even more expensive than 14.5. On the Tiger, you get cruise, but quick shifter is also not standard. So the Husky is the only bike with those things as standard. Uh, tubeless rims is something people like to talk about. Tubeless rims, easier to repair, less unsprung weight, the suspension works better, it's lighter, uh, less heat buildup, the tires last longer. So Husky has that standard. And the only bike here that doesn't have that is the Africa Twin. Now, the Africa Twin Adventure Sports, the bigger expensive one, does have tubeless, but the standard one at this price does not. Now you might be wondering, well, what about the KTM 890R, the bike that the, the Husky is kind of based on? Well, uh, for 2022, that bike has a base price of 14,600, but you have to add the tech pack, which almost everybody does, because if you don't add that, the 890R does not come standard with cruise control or quick shifter. So the tech pack is another $800. That brings the comparative price of the 890R up to 15,400, which makes it more like this Tiger or something like that. Um, so, now, yes, you do get better suspension on the 890R for going off-road. It's a more aggressive, longer travel with more adjustments, and it's a thicker uh, fork stanchion as well. Uh, but only the top like 5% of off-road riders who are really riding super fast off-road are going to need that. So still, if you look back, like as a quick comparison, and we'll do more videos later, and I know like people want to compare it to the Tenere 700, but that's unfair because that's that's a way che that's like a 50% less money. That's way cheaper. It's a whole different class of bike. So again, I apologize for the ugly riding and kind of just throwing this up here, but I wanted to put this in this video because it's pretty it's a pretty compelling package. Everything you get for the money, it's actually really really good. All right, let's wrap up these initial impressions of the Husqvarna Norden 901. Now, everything I'm about to say, keep in mind that 
I'm in the honeymoon phase with this bike. I just got it, I paid my own money for it. So that's gonna bias all my sort of perceptions more towards the positive side than they will be probably in three months or six months from now. So let's review what are the pros and cons to this bike. Uh, based on the writing I just did, a lot of the stuff I talked about, a lot of this is kind of obvious, but the pros are, there's a lot of pros to it. It feels very, very light. The center of gravity is incredibly low, which translates into an extremely fun, engaging riding experience. It doesn't feel heavy. It, honestly, it doesn't even really feel like a big adventure bike at all. It feels like a smaller motorcycle. And I just can't tell you how nice that is and how refreshing that is after having ridden so many heavy adventure bikes over the past year. This is different than that. And I for, just forgot how good the KTM 790 and 890 platform truly, truly is. There's a lot of other things that are good about it. The styling, I know it's polarizing. Personally, I love it. At least it's different and it's, it's striking whether you like it or not. So there is that. Uh, the value, we looked at that chart uh, in my office there a minute ago, but the value is very, very good. Looking at the equipment you get for the price and it's very, very good in that respect. The other thing that's really great about it is right out of the box, it's very, very comfortable. The seat is one of the most, this one of the widest, the most supportive, most comfortable seats that that I've experienced uh, on any stock motorcycle. So, and that that's saying a lot because I've ridden some comfortable bikes. Seat's really good. The other pro that I want to say is the technology. It works really well. As you guys saw, the, the riding modes work really well. It's intuitive to control. It's easy to control. Uh, the electronics are really great on this bike. They add to the riding experience. And when I'm able to get the explore mode, which currently isn't available in the US for some reason, but it should be any week now, then I'll have even more traction control settings and more customization. So that'll be great. What are the cons to the bike? So there's always the downsides to every bike. And I always want to mention that. So initially what I would say, the things I don't like so far, one, the first thing that stood out to me was the wind noise. It's a pretty noisy uh, wind coming off the windshield. So. I'm gonna be looking very, very fast, very quickly to try to do something to address that. And I'll report back on that. The other con that we've gone over is the engine sounds kind of rattly and just, it doesn't sound refined, especially at idle. A lot of you have already commented on that. It, it is what it is, that's how this engine sounds, but you can't argue the performance of it. Uh, so that's just something you're gonna to have to decide. But I can tell you once you ride away, it's not something you're hearing. It's just kind of, at cold start up on idle, it sounds rattly. The other downside for a lot of people is going to be the seat height. Although when I saw the specs for the bike and I was like, okay, 33 inch, 33 and a half inch seat height, that's pretty low. But the problem is it's such a wide seat that it puts your legs out at kind of an angle going like that. And it's hard to reach the ground. And I'm five foot 11 and it still feels pretty tall. I've actually kind of settled on this low position. I thought I was going to like the high position. I did try the high position on the seat, but it feels even a little bit too high for me. And, um, yeah, I don't know. So I'm going to keep running in the low position, but it's not low to the ground. Now, Husqvarna does have a, a lowering kit for the bike, which you could look into, and you could probably get a lower seat as well, either from Husky or as an aftermarket solution. So those are my initial impressions. I know there's a lot more to talk about, and I've already filmed other videos in this series, so just be patient as I release those. Uh, I'm going to also do a video dedicated to answering all the questions that you have on the bike. As you can tell, I'm really committed to getting all the information out there on this bike that I possibly can, so that if you're looking at purchasing one, you, you have really good information to base that purchase on. There's just not enough, uh, I, in my opinion, there's not enough of this kind of content in the motorcycle world. So anyway, that's why I'm doing this. I hope you guys find it useful. Please subscribe, stay tuned for all the future stuff on this bike. I'm gonna be releasing one to two videos a week dedicated to the Norden uh, for the next few weeks. So. So keep watching that, support Big Rock Moto, uh, you know, shop at Rocky Mountain, shop at Revzilla, support me on Patreon, uh, always hit the thumbs up, always leave a comment, uh, support the channel so I can keep doing this. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.